let's get you in deep. How's it going there YouTube coming at you with a video today. So in this video, I'm just here to help the average Joe tuner, you know, spend maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks on a device that'll help them set their gains if they're not comfortable doing it by ear, instead of spending hundreds or maybe even thousands if they want to get a really legit expensive benchtop O-scope. So, you know, with that, take it for what it's worth. There's a lot of different ways to do things. I'm not saying this is the only way to set gains. Um, I'm familiar with the tweeter method, which is very simple and easy to do. I might even make a video about that next week on how to do it that way. Um, setting by ear, that's always what I've done. I have a very sharp ear to listen for distortion, um, that max gain point before you hit clipping. For me, it's easy to do. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Again, I'm not here to promote one way or another. I'm just giving you guys another option out there and proving to you that it is a, a viable option where you can spend, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks and, uh, you know, be able to get a legit sine wave to see your signal when it's actually starting to either soft clip or hard clip. Okay. So hope you guys enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I got the first test set up here. I have my cheap $40 O-scope that you can find online on Amazon, eBay, any other vendor like that. And I got my professional benchtop O-scope here and they're both hooked up to my source unit which is going to be playing a 40 hertz test tone, zero dB, to my test speaker here. Now, the purpose of this test, I've had a lot of people bash me and say, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't be telling people to use the, o the cheap O-scope because it's not as good as the real thing. It's not as good as a DD-1. Well, I'm here to prove to you, okay, that this is spot on accurate with an expensive benchtop O-scope, okay? So again, I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm not here to bash any brand. You know, I'm a supporter and enthusiast of the car audio community. I just want to expose, you know, truth and just show through testing results, you know, what I came up with here. So I'm going to run a 40 hertz test tone and uh, you're going to see the signal pop up on both the devices. Okay. The mini O-scope and the big O-scope are connected to the signal that's going to be put through the speaker here. Okay. So you're going to see the same signal go through uh, both devices here. Okay. And as I turn up the volume and it's starting to send a clip signal to that speaker, you're going to see basically identically the signal as it looks like almost like identical on the benchtop O-scope and the cheap $40 O-scope. So let's go ahead and get this 40 Hertz test tone playing. Okay. So let's see here. We're at 33. Okay. I'm going to start turning it up. Clean, clean, clip. Big clip. Little clip, clean. Let's try that again. Clip, big clip. Pretty cool, huh? That a little cheap $40 O-scope will give you the exact same signal as an expensive benchtop O-scope, which could cost you thousands of dollars depending if you get it brand new and what brand. So let's go ahead and try that again. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, part one of the test here, uh, cheap $40 O-scope performs just as good to tell you what the sine wave of your signal is doing as a big, bulky, expensive benchtop O-scope. So boom, myth one busted. This thing is good to go. Now, if you guys noticed in that last video that you could actually hear distortion, right? You can see when the sine wave on the O-scope started to clip, you could actually hear the tone of that sine wave change. Clean, clean, clip. Big clip. Little clip, clean. 
okay? It started to change, and that change is distortion, okay? Your speakers are starting to distort because they're getting a clip signal. So you can kind of correlate that sound that you're actually hearing, right? The, the change of tone of that sine wave with the actual clipping point of the sine wave that you're seeing on the oscope. So that's where, you know, using your ears, right, come into play, where you can actually just use your ears, right? If you're comfortable with it and, uh, you know, know what to listen for, then you don't even have to buy anything, right? Just trust your body, right? Trust your God-given tools. All right, so each of these have a volts slash div adjustment, okay? What that does is that affects the amplitude of the sine wave. Right now, they're both on two volts. But watch what happens here if I go down to uh, one volt, okay? It lowers it. If I go down to five, even more so, okay? Now, let me do that on the smaller oscope. All right, same thing on the mini oscope. I also have the V-div, which is also your voltage per division. And if I go up to one volt, look at that, the amplitude pretty much doubles back down to two. If I go to five, um, you can barely see it. So again, the V div button, it affects the amplitude of the sine wave. So you can either um, see it bigger or see it smaller, pretty much. All right, the only other thing you gotta worry about uh, for a setting on this is the time division. So over here, it's seconds per division. And same thing over here, you got seconds, you also got milliseconds. So let me go ahead and run the sine wave. Okay, now watch what happens. When you adjust it over here, it's set to two milliseconds. When I set it to one millisecond, it flattens it out, okay? So I go back to two, that's how it was. Now, if I go to five milliseconds, it's gonna compress it even more, you see? So that's what that does, and does the same thing over here. Let me show you. Okay, 40 hertz signal, five milliseconds. Okay, there's two milliseconds, see it flattens it out. One millisecond, you can barely even see it. So let's go back to five. Now there's 10 milliseconds, compresses it. Okay, there's 20. So let's say you like that, you go back here. Now you can increase that up, put that down, however you like it. So that's how you manipulate, that's how you manipulate the oscope. Very simple. Um, like I said, the V-div basically adjusts the amplitude of how, the height of the sine wave and the sectiv button basically manipulates, um, you know, is it compressed or is it spread out the sine wave? So that's really all you need to know. And then obviously um, you wanna make sure that if you're reading an AC sine wave, which that's what this is, uh, which is being played to your speakers, make sure it's on AC. That's it, you're good to go. This one, obviously it has more manipulation, more ability to fine tune, but you don't need all that if you're doing this just to set your gains and to see what your sine wave looks like coming out of your amplifier. Okay, very, very simple, easy device to use. All right, and I've had people ask, well, how do I set up my uh, oscope here for a 1000 hertz test tone? So for me, how I have it set up is 0.1 volts and 0.5 milliseconds. And again, every track's gonna be different. And if the amplitude's getting too high, remember, your V-div, you adjust that, and that's what either increases or decreases your amplitude. Okay, so you can get it in the picture. Remember, time division, sec division, it either compresses or it flattens out the wave. All right, so this just goes to show that distortion is dangerous for your speakers. But uh, yeah, I just ended up blowing the speaker. It started to uh, yeah, sound a little crispy. So let's see what that looks like on an oscope just for fun. It goes, uh-oh. All right, lightly used speaker for sale, 20 bucks. Any takers? Works good, I promise. All right, guys, and one more thing. I did make a video on how to use an O-scope to set the gains on your subwoofer amp. I've been getting comments and asked questions by people asking, well, how do you do it on a four-channel amp, right? Because your four-channel amps, typically they have two gains. They have a gain for channel one and two, and they have a gain for channel three and four, okay? And if you're tuning your, your mids or highs, right, obviously you don't have to use a 40 hertz test tone. Uh, I did it for this test because it's easy to uh, be able to hear distortion. I kind of wanted to throw that little trick in there so you guys can actually hear when the sine wave starts clipping. But if you're doing tweeters, uh, your mids, and you want to check the uh, clip point on your amp, then yes, you can use a higher test tone. You can use 500, you can use 1,000. 
uh, ten, uh, a thousand is pretty common. So that's why I use that example in the video there of how to manipulate the oscope to uh, you know read a thousand hertz sine wave. And all you do is very simple, okay? Most four channel amps have a gain setting for channel one and two and a gain setting for channel three and four. So like I always tell people, make sure you get your amp set exactly how you want it, right? Make sure you get your EQ settings, okay? Whether you have a, a, a preamp equalizer or you're using your head unit equalizer, um, you know, all your adjustments, your high pass filter, low pass filter, if you're setting up a band pass filter, uh, you know, get everything dialed in. You know, your gain, in all honesty, should be the last thing that you touch when you are tuning your system, right? Get everything dialed in just how you like it, and then you fill in with that gain, right, up to clipping, or gosh, some people don't even need it that loud, right? There's some people that, you know, they don't need to find that point of clip. They just turn it up uh, and, and, you know, make sure that they're not in clipping, and then, you know, they're good, right? They don't have to even try to get to that threshold. So very simply, if you're doing a four channel amp, first off, if you didn't see the video of how to do a subwoofer amp, make sure to check it out. Again, link down here of where that video is, but uh, how to do a four channel amp, it's the same process. Um, you can use, like I said, instead of a 40 Hertz test tone, use a thousand Hertz test tone, use 500, whatever, it doesn't matter. And do it in the same manner, okay? But like I said, four channel amp, you got a gain for channel one and two, and you got a gain for channel three and four. Okay, and you don't need to check every channel. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hook up your probes to channel one, let's say, okay? Channel one, which maybe has your tweeters on it, okay? You're gonna run the tone, thousand hertz, whatever tone you want, okay? Manipulate your oscope so you can see the sine wave, how I showed you how to do that, and then just start turning up the gain, right? Turn, make sure your head unit volume is at maxed unclipped volume or 75% or however loud you typically are gonna to listen to it, the maximum you're ever gonna to listen to it. All your settings are, are, are legit and dialed in. And then go ahead and start turning up that gain with your probes connected to channel one of your amplifier, okay? Until you start seeing clipping, okay? Maybe you won't see clipping, okay? Maybe you can turn the gain all the way up, who knows? Doubtful, okay, very doubtful. But uh, you know, just keep going up until it's either A, as loud as you need it to be or want it to be, or two, you start to see that signal clip, okay? Again, some people don't need to go all the way up to clipping in order to be happy with, you know, where the gain is set, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna repeat that same process on channel three, okay? You don't need to do channel one and two because channel one and two share the same gain level. So just jump right to channel three, connect your probes to channel three, and make sure everything's as it was for the first test, right? Your volume is at max volume that you listen to or max unclipped volume. All your uh, settings are dialed in. And then go ahead and connect your probes to channel three and start cranking up that gain, right? To either it's at a point you're happy with and you're not gonna need it louder than that or until the point where your signal starts to clip, okay? And that is it. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you gotta do to tune your four channel amp, okay, with one of these oscopes. And again, there's a lot of tools out there. I'm not here to bash any company. You got SMD DD1. If you wanna pay a couple hundred bucks for a red LED, right, for just very simple user interface, you don't gotta worry about adjusting knobs or levels, then get it, spend the money, okay? I'm not here to bash Steve Mead, okay? He did a lot for the industry, okay? I'm not gonna hate on him. Um, you know, if you want to uh, buy one of these cheap $40 O-scopes and, you know, See the sine wave, great. You know, that's an awesome thing to do. If you wanna buy a bench top one, you wanna go by ear, you wanna do a tweeter method, you wanna use your multimeter, whatever you wanna do, okay? We're all in this together, okay? We all share a common thread of just wanting to get the most out of our system and that's why I make these videos. So anyway, uh, make sure again, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, let's take it to the next level. Mm -hmm.